far as rescue stories go, that day's dirty job was a ditch that needed to be dug some 20 miles from the nearest sign of civilization. The boss drove us out, dumped the three of us off with the necessary tools and our lunch kits, and told us that he would be back to pick us up around 5 p.m. And by 5 p.m., we were frozen, we were tired, and we were tired of being frozen. We put our shovels on the ground and we looked down the dirt road, no truck. We were just about, just about to begin hiking home. And we saw the most wondrous of sights, a set of headlights bouncing in the distance, up and down like a waving flashlight. We were still cold, we were still tired, but relief was coming. And that changed everything. Do you know that feeling? Mordecai did. And Mordecai got word of the impending Holocaust. He's the dastardly, narcissistic Haman with his royal robe and his requirement. He would not bow. Well, Haman tattletailed on Mordecai to Xerxes. And he convinced the easily convincible king to destroy all the Jews. When Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, he put on sackcloth and ashes, and he went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. When Esther got word of Mordecai's mourning, she sent him a batch of clothing and told him in no uncertain terms to get his act together and to be quiet. Mordecai gave her reply some thought. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. Mordecai got this, came to understand that his God, the God of his people, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob was alive and well and undefeated in battle. God will have his people. So the question is not, will God prevail? The question is, will you be part of the victory?